circle to what's going on today as the young people are attempting to to deal with the whole culture of gang violence and, and rap music. But let me say this before we go. We don't want to give the impression that we are not supportive of, of the various types of music. Oh, I love it. Um, music and freedom of expression are amazing. Yes. yes. And, and those are the things that allow music to evolve over the years and so mm. forth. So it, it's great to see the energy and, and the creativity that's going on. I, I think the discussion today is, is how we can make sure that as people enjoy this amazing genre, that they keep in mind the realities versus things that are not real. So let's go ahead and go to break. And as we go to break, um, we'll also remind our listeners that you can chat with us and we'd love to hear from you. And we will talk to you when we get back from break. You're listening to Straight No Chaser, the only show to quench your talk radio thirst. Welcome to the Community Happy Hour, where we will showcase events throughout the country designed to promote friendship, understanding, and community pride. On June 28th at 11 a.m., the Baltimore Career Fair will be held at the Holiday Inn at 301 West Lombard Street in Baltimore, Maryland. On June 30th, the Neighborhood Vacancy Initiative of Legal Services of Eastern Missouri is hosting a free beneficiary deed clinic at 3113 Gasconade Street in St. Louis, Missouri. And finally, the gentlemen of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated will be hosting the annual Bowling for Babies event along with the March of Dimes on September 1st, 2018 at the Texas Station Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Registration deadline August 31st, 2018. So come on, everybody. Raise your glass and let's salute our wonderful communities. Welcome back to Straight No Chaser. So come on. Raise your glass, and let's get back to MBZ, Pastor C, and the Chief. Welcome back, guys. You are listening to Straight No Chaser. I'm Pastor C. The Chief is with us, and also MBZ. We have started a great conversation about um, rap culture and violence, and I wanted to start this particular segment just sharing a little bit about myself and my upbringing and um, kind of shared some light on how some young men get involved and begin to embrace a very violent mindset. Um, I grew up in the city of Chicago in the inner city in the Inglewood community. Um, and Inglewood was known or is known even today um, for its homicide rate. You know, um, I was raised by my mom. And so there was a sense of void in my life. I'm not saying that I didn't have the family that I needed to become the man that I am today. But sometimes you look for validation in other things, in other people, in other uh, organizations. I was a part of the church, but I guess that wasn't sufficient. And so I had friends who were a part of this gang called the Black Peace Stones that used to be the El Rookins. And um, I lived right in between the El Rookins or the Blackstones and the Gangster Disciples. And so I knew everybody because I was an athlete, but I was guilty by association with the Blackstones. Mm. And so I was a part of that. I shook up with them. Um, we, you know, hung out together, did some violent things. And there was a sense of me thinking that I had to prove myself and prove that I belong um, in the organization so I found myself embracing conduct and behaviors that I was not raised to do right 
And I was doing that to fit in to this particular culture that um, I wanted to be a part of. Now, you know, it was something where when I was coming up, they had gang meetings, you mm -hmm. know, and they would meet at a, a designated place. And there was a sense of honor and respect because if you didn't respect those in leadership, you would get what is called a violation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they became your family. And you had a lot of broken young men who didn't have fathers, who didn't have male figures in their life. The organization or the gang became their family and they became loyal to the gang. And so I, I'll never forget, it was one Friday night when they had the uh, meetings and I was supposed to be blessed in. Now, mm -hmm. when you are blessed in, you become an official member of the gang. And there are some things that are done to you or, or you go through a ritual and you become a part of the gang. And so I was on my way there and my mom called me um, because my friend and I had made up in our mind that we were going to do that. Mm -hmm. My mom called me. She said, hey, come in the house. I said, no, mom, I'm going to the park. She said, no, you're going to vacation Bible school. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. So we, 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 we had words, but I went to vacation Bible school and my friend went and he got blessed in the gang that particular night. And um, on my way from church, I see the police out there. Mm -hmm. There was all type of disarray. And there were some things that happened at the park um, where they had the meeting at that my mother told me I could not be a part of and go to. Mm -hmm. now, now, I just wanted to start off there because I grew up in that environment. And right. I did not want to be in that environment. However, you learn how to survive with the hand that you were given. Right. Okay. But I still had dreams and aspirations, academia, and all of those things so that I, I would not be there for the rest of my life. Now, you're talking to a person who grew up in that, who right. wanted to be out. This generation, you have kids that got both their mother and father at home. Yep. Middle class people, educated individuals, college degree credentialed individuals who have children mm -hmm. who were brought up in private schools, who are trying to pursue that type of lifestyle and they do not have to. Right. I don't believe that the rap genre or rap music was created to introduce a derogatory way of life. Absolutely not. But it has turned into something that is really killing our generation. And it is disheartening to see young people who didn't grow up in that. Right. Who are turning to that and creating an image that really does not exist within them. I grew up in the hood, in the ghetto, all that type of stuff but I am not a product of my environment here. Right. So in essence, Pastor C, you, you have not only the academic creds, you have the street creds. I got street creds. <laughs> you know, they know me around there. You know, they used to call me C-Note, you know, huh? 56 right. and Polina. <laughs> so, so is it now Pastor C-Note? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, man? Hey, the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You know, I, I still go home and I see some of those guys, but, you know, uh, Chief and Ambezi, a lot of people I grew up with are no longer with us. They're, um, they're deceased. Wow. They get caught up in the street and they end up dying. But those are people who couldn't come out of that environment. Yep. And so when you see a young man dead in a car because of an image that he's portraying that he doesn't have to live, that's very, very discouraging to me Definitely. because you have people who are trying to get out of the mindset, out of the lifestyle out of the environment that they were born into and then you have some people who are trying to get to where they are yeah it's it's crazy to me it really is. i just think um what's disappointing about this generation is that it seems like we've kind of lost touch with the ability to see things and be entertained by them without trying to do it you know you can go see a movie like boys in the hood and see that whole movie and then go home to your family and have dinner and go to bed right but now it's like it went from doing things like that to now we see it and now we want to do it and i i honestly think that you know it's not really exaggerating when you're saying that our generation is kind of losing touch with reality mm -hmm. it's it's a common theme that they talk about all the time i mean you have millennials who are either struggling to get through college and pay off their loans and all that stuff. And then you have another group of us that aren't really millennials. It's kind of like the generation under us who are like 
just they they're completely out of touch they they get on social media and stuff and they get consumed by it and I, I think that is the one dangerous thing about social media because you used to be able to tell the difference between entertainment and real. Right. And now it's being all mixed in. Exactly. So it's like, how is somebody how is somebody younger? Because, you know, now six and seven year olds have phones. Sure. And, you know, they, they mess around and they get into stuff that they're not supposed to get into. But how are we supposed to protect people who are naive and really don't know the difference when they scroll down and they see they see people tweet just like their friends you know like you could have a rapper that tweets about a beef that they're in and all that stuff and they might be tweeting that to get their numbers up and for entertainment but you're watching this person tweet just like your friend down the street so you think it's real Mm -hmm. so it's like you know i think that also has a lot to do with it it's it's just simply losing touch with reality And, and you know what and see for me, I know what it's like to lose a loved one. My little brother got killed on wow. the streets of Chicago. I've, I've had family members die in the game. And, you know, by the grace of God, I did not get caught up in that lifestyle. I had plenty of opportunities, and yet I've made some horrible decisions. And God preserved my life, and I've made some d- decisions to make sure that my life d- does not end up there. But... When you lose a loved one, when you when you walking down the street and getting shot at, and bullets flying past you and hitting fences, and you you hear that, don't nobody want to grow up like that, right? You, you know, you don't want to grow up, you know, having to change your entire route home because gangs are fighting on the corner yep. um, of your regular route home from school. You don't want to grow up like that. And so when I see young people talking this lifestyle and not living it i'm like wow yeah listen i would love i would have loved to have your peel heel lifestyle i would have yeah. loved to go to your private school <laughs> i would have loved to wear a uniform to school and live in a neighborhood that was very nice you and you know, know i'm glad you brought that up too because as you know and the chief knows because he is my dad um I grew up in private school. I went to private school. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine the shock and disbelief when I saw some people who were who were underclassmen when I was a senior at my school. They had graduated and I go on one of their Snapchats and they are like waving guns around and stuff like that. And I'm like, ho, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You live in Summerlin, my guy. Like you live straight in the suburbs and unfortunately one of the guys that they ran around with ended up getting shot right over there on blue diamond because what a lot of people don't realize as well is when you start doing all this stuff and you actually start catching the attention of people who are really in that lifestyle i'm gonna go back to a a quote from lil bibby who is also out of chicago he he talks about in one of his interviews how you know you can't bring somebody who is not from that background into that background because they want to go home back to their loved ones. The people who really live that life and are running those streets, they don't really expect to live past their 20s. They're they're happy to ride ride for their people at all costs. And that's that's really one of the main differences. You're going you're you're you are a, pr- a privileged person going up against somebody who feels like they have nothing to lose. Right. When and And when that happens, the person who has nothing to lose is always going to come back on top because that person is going to push, 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 push buttons and think it's a game and think that they're going to come out alive. But the but the person that they're going up against is like, I seen jail before. I'm I'm not really concerned about it. Like they will take a life and it, it usually takes a life to be taken or something extremely, extremely devastating for somebody to get that wake up call. Like, Hey, this is, this is an image. And these are the people who really live this life and you don't want to neither do they. Well, well, here's my question. And I want to ask you too, chief. Do you think that these deaths that are happening to these young people, do you think it's causing other young people in your generation to think and and actually not want to be a part of certain activities or you know is it like um instigating something within them to continue 
and be more hard, if you will, right. or be more street, if you will. I mean, what is this provoking? Well, on the upside, I think 